had an interesting minor exchange with Pyro yesterday. Um, his comments on Professor Anton's latest video, which is quite a good video, actually. I like Professor Anton, and this particular video was pretty good. Um, he says that, or if I understand you correctly, Pyro, if you're watching this, if you're out there, um, that desire is information. Now, that's an interesting idea. Um, let's look at sort of, you know, I've been badgering people to say what is desire in and of itself. Let's say what is information in and of itself. Um, that's an interesting thing. Information is that which is stored in here. Okay, now I understand the difference between actually just having, um, what would you say, stuff stored on my hard drive that doesn't really mean anything. It requires consciousness to make sense out of it. It requires consciousness to turn a bunch of information or a bunch of, no, not information, but a bunch of impulses or chemical reactions in my nervous system into a coherent thought. Just like um, music, say, requires somebody listening to it to turn it into actual a process, a thing, a music flowing from one note to another. <coughs> because in music you have to remember the previous series of notes and see the harmony or the, the progression that takes place into the present, right? Now imagine, imagine listening to music um, the way that I describe <coughs> my version of the information stream. We're sitting in a car, and by the way, this isn't my metaphor. I'm not trying to claim that it's mine. Um, we're, you're sitting in a car, looking through the rear window as the car moves forward, and the world is going by this way. When you're listening to music, you're listening to not just the present note that you're hearing in the now, in the second that you're in, because you're only hearing one note at a time, although I suppose in the case of, say, harmony or discordancy or something like that, you're hearing several notes simultaneously, literally, to each other. But all that you get in that is, you know, it's the same thing as when you get, you know, somebody hitting their hands on a piano key uh, keyboard without really paying attention. You get, you know. But when you're listening to music and you're listening to it, you, you, you've, you've got a memory of the last couple of seconds and the last few notes and, the, and, and your mind knits it together. Um, your mind knits all the notes together into something called a melody or a harmony or something like this, a tune, a logical or reasonable progression from one note to the next. Now that is, again, that's my view of music seen through the information stream as I describe it because it's going backwards. <coughs> the notes, you're not generating the notes. The notes are coming at you through the information stream, I guess. But you're seeing them sort of backwards. You're seeing them as they come, they appear here, and they recede into the distance. Now that, as I understand it, is Pyro's view of the information stream. But you've got to remember that you're ta in, in, in the case of music, in the case of information, in the case of anything like that, um... You're talking about something that's externally generated, or not so much, or perhaps not externally generated, but the stimulus is not necessarily, like you're sort of a passive observer of it, and it's kind of deterministic in a way. I guess you would say properly done music is deterministic, because when you set up a bunch of notes before it, and the only reasonable note to sort of hit in, the, in a, in a, you know, uh, in a proper melody is pretty much obvious what you've got to do. And even if you're going to sort of go off in one direction or off in another direction... By the way, Indian music kind of deliberately plays on this. If you ever listen to really good classical Indian music, it actually does deliberately sort of do this. It comes at you as sort of an information stream type thing. I've never studied Western classical music. It may do the same thing. I don't know. I don't know Western musical... I, I don't know Indian musical theory very well either. But <clears throat> I've listened to Indian music ad nauseum my entire life, and it does kind of seem to do this. It kind of seems to sort of be illustrating a determined universe um, and saying this is what a, the determined part of the universe looks like. But what is it that knits the whole thing together? What is it that knits a bunch of noises, a bunch of sounds, a bunch of vibrations into a quote-unquote piece of music, into a tune? Something needs to be there to do this. That's your memory, right? Your memory of the last few seconds influences how you're going to hear the next note. 
Again, that's looking through the rear window of a forward moving car. Turn around and look over the driver's shoulder through the windscreen. What's that? I don't think you can say that that is the same thing as looking through the rear window. Um, Pyro, if you say that information, that desire is just information, then you're saying that desire is something that is generated outside of the individual. It's just, or it's an illusion, or desire is some sort of error that's taking place that we, that something thinks that it's desiring things when in fact it isn't. Again, what, what, whatever that is, I'm not, I'm not positing the idea of an identity here, um, or a I, or anything like that. I'm trying to make sense out of the phenomenon of desire, which is intimately mixed up with suffering. It's int intimately mixed up with even the concept of error, as I uh, sort of had another go-to with Artificer the other day. Whatever creates the error is, is, or whatever makes the mistake of thinking that it exists is what I'm referring to as the sort of the viewer in the information stream. Desire... I can't see desire being fed into that thing's head. <laughs> um, I can see unpleasant desires or pleasant desires or motivations or whatever being fed into that thing's head. Um, but if we are puppets, there must be a puppet master somewhere. And if everything that we do is sort of determined or information, something's on the receiving end of all of that information. Now, I would posit the view that desire and abstraction for desire is what takes place when you stop looking through the rear view window of the moving car and you turn around, you look over the driver's shoulder into sort of the face of becoming. That's the moment where I said, you know, Arjuna on the battle of Kurukshetra battlefield uh, sort of almost went insane when Krishna turned him around, turned his head around and said, look into the face of existence. That's the Vishvarupa, right? The universal vision where you see everything at once. It's also the same thing as sort of Zapfi's caveman is killed by, if you've ever read The Last Messiah by Petr Vessel Sotve. <laughs> Try to pronounce that correctly according to the Norwegian. Um, desire is different. Desire, I don't think for it to be desire um, is more than just information. Information is what you see sort of flying by. Desire is what you do or what happens when you look over the driver's shoulder into the face of becoming or into the face of actual reality, uh, into the chaos of everything coming at you as opposed to things receding in the distance. Um, this has got me very interested, this whole idea of, you know, other people's view of what is going on there. Um, I can't see how you could say that it's information when you're looking into the stream of becoming, when you're looking into not what has already happened. <laughs> Remember that. I'm not saying that you use your memory to sort of pay attention to the what's going on behind the car in order to make sense of, you know, the music that's being played. I'm saying listen to music backwards. <laughs> listen to music backwards. and Or not even backwards, but listen to music in terms of what notes are going to come instead of what notes have already been played, if you can do that. <laughs> um, music's a good way to actually come at determinism and to sort of play with it as a concept in your mind. How would you actually, um, how would music sound if you looked through the windshield instead of through the rear window? <laughs> um, that's desire. Um, that's evaluation. That's putting value on things. That's different. <laughs> that's different from just seeing things happen and they're just blind mechanics. Desire says that's good, that's bad, that's I don't want that to happen, that I don't care about, this is something that could be good, could be bad, but I better keep my eye on it, etc., etc., etc. All the stuff, I guess, that falls together and that can sort of result in anxiety or contentment, where you're confident that whatever comes in the information stream is going to be good, that's contentment or confidence, I guess. When you think it's all going to be bad, that's anxiety. Both are 
um, intimately mixed up in desire. Over to you, Pyro. 